All right, this video will run through a quiz about uh, graphing rational functions. So here in problem number one, we're given a rational function that has already been graphed, and we're asked some questions about it. So let's talk about the vertical asymptotes. We have one here at negative one and another one at positive two. So we will call them x equals negative one and x equals two. Don't just say negative one, don't just say two, say x equals negative one and x equals two. There's also a horizontal asymptote um, here on the x-axis. That is the line y equals zero. Now let's talk about the domain. The domain is the x values of a graph. So um, it's how far the graph goes from uh, left to right. All the x values of the graph from left to right. So, all right, we've got this portion of the graph, um, but on the x-axis, it goes from negative infinity to negative one. So um, the first part of the domain goes from negative infinity to negative one. We'll leave that round because you can't touch the asymptote. Uh, negative one is not included. Union. Um, now we're looking at this portion of the graph, okay, but looking at the x-axis, it goes from negative one to two. So that's the next part of the domain, is from negative one to positive two. Okay, now let's look at this portion of the graph, but on the x-axis, it goes from two to infinity. So we'll put two to infinity. So that's the domain. Um, now for the range, the range is the y values. Okay, um, so if you look at the graph, um, if you look at just the middle piece, for example, all right, you'll notice that just this part alone contains every y value from negative infinity to positive infinity. So um, when you're doing the range, you can't really look at one of these branches at a time because um, when you look at, for example, this, whoops, when you look, for example, at this y value, um, you're hitting two different parts of the graph. So um, we're hitting y values everywhere it's just that sometimes we're hitting more than one. But anyway, even just the middle portion shows you that it's going from uh, negative infinity to positive infinity. So that's where we're going to put for the range. It's negative infinity to infinity. Now let's talk increasing and decreasing. Okay, um, when you're doing increasing and decreasing intervals, you are scanning from left to right across the function. And from left to right, this portion of the graph is decreasing. It's going downhill. Now, when I write this interval, though, I'm only talking about x values. So let's just only look at the x-axis. So this portion of the graph on the x-axis goes from here to here. That's negative infinity to negative 1. All right, so when you write these down, make sure you're only looking at the x-axis. Okay, so we have a decreasing interval that goes from, whoops, I put that up, like I was getting ready to write on increasing. We have a decreasing interval from negative infinity to negative one. And we'll leave it round because it doesn't reach the, um, the asymptote. Okay, next, we are looking at, um, it jumps to here and does this. Now this is also decreasing. Uh, the entire way of this middle part is going downhill. All right, so that portion of the graph is decreasing. And again, we're only talking about the x values. So looking at the x-axis, this portion of the graph goes from negative one to two. Okay, so we'll have another decreasing portion from negative one to two. Now look, let's look at the last portion of the graph. 
all right? Because then it jumps up to here and it is decreasing again. And uh, that portion of the graph, looking at the x-axis, goes from 2 to infinity. Um, so that's another decreasing portion of the graph. Uh, so I'm going to say union 2 to infinity. So the entire graph is decreasing. So um, it makes sense that the decreasing intervals uh, should match the domain because the, the entire graph is the domain. Um, so it's all decreasing. So for increasing, we'll just say none. There are no increasing intervals. Okay, now let's talk about end behavior. End behavior is uh, always going to match the horizontal asymptote. See how we have y equals zero? Um, because when you're talking about end behavior, you're just talking about what is happening uh, at the ends of the graph. The, the far left and the far right. Okay, so when we talk about um, as x approaches negative infinity, we're saying as we go towards the far left. And as we go towards the far left, we're approaching the asymptote. We're approaching zero, the horizontal asymptote, not a coincidence. And uh, as x approaches positive infinity, that means as we go towards the far right. Um, as we move towards the far right, we are again approaching the horizontal asymptote. We are again approaching zero. So these are always going to match the horizontal asymptote. Okay, for problem number two, we're supposed to make a graph of this function and fill in this information. So um, I like to start with the vertical asymptote. Um, we know that the vertical asymptote, you set the denominator equal to zero. So if we set x plus 2 equal to zero, we're going to get x equals negative 2. So one asymptote will be x equals negative 2. Obviously, that is a vertical asymptote. So let's go ahead and graph that. All right, so um, x equals negative 2. So we have a vertical asymptote here at negative 2, dotted line. Okay, now let's talk horizontal asymptote. Okay, so for a moment, imagine that we didn't have the 3 there uh, on the end. If we did not have the 3, um, then we would use our three rules for finding a horizontal asymptote. So what is the horizontal asymptote? Well, we need to talk about the degree the degree of the numerator compared with the degree of the denominator. If the degree of the numerator if the degree of the numerator is less, then um, the horizontal asymptote will be y equals zero. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the denominator, then we make a fraction out of the leading coefficients, and that'll be the horizontal asymptote. If the degree of the numerator is greater, then there is no horizontal asymptote. So let's see which situation we're in. So we have a constant in the top, all right? That means um, uh, in the numerator, we have degree 0. Um, this x in the denominator means we have degree 1. So the degree of the numerator is less. So that means um, the horizontal asymptote uh, of this function would be y equals zero. Um, but we have this extra number on the end. That has the effect of moving the graph up three units. If you take an asymptote of zero, that's the x-axis. If you move it up three units, one, two, three, then you are here. Okay, so the horizontal asymptote, um, because we do have this plus three on the end, the horizontal asymptote will actually be y equals 3. Okay, so y equals 3 will be the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so um, let's talk about, let's find the, uh, the x and the y intercepts. 
When you have an extra number on the end like this, the way you will find the x-intercept will be to set the entire function equal to zero and solve. So if I take um, negative one over x plus two and uh, plus three, uh, set all that equal to zero, when I solve this, I will have the x-intercept. Um, so I would start by subtracting three from both sides. So I will have negative one over x plus two is equal to negative three. Now I'm going to, going to think of this as negative three over one, and then I will cross multiply. Okay, if I do this diagonal right here, that's negative three times that's negative three times x plus two. If I do this diagonal right here, um, then negative one times one is just negative one. Little distributive property here, I've got negative three x minus six. If I add six to both sides, so that's negative three x is equal to five. And if I divide both sides by negative three, I get x equals five over three, um, negative five over three. Do not make this a decimal. Leave it as a fraction. So, um, so my x-intercept will be negative five over three comma zero. All right, for the x-intercept, you're gonna have an x value. Um, and the y value will be zero. For the y-intercept, you're gonna have a y value, a non-zero y value, but the x value will be zero. Okay, so um, finding the x-intercept was the harder part. Finding the y-intercept is easy. Um, we can just put this function in the calculator and go to zero. So we go to the table feature and we type it in. So I'm going to uh, hit the fraction button. I've got negative one over x plus two. And that's going to be plus three. So there we have it. Um, hit enter. We could use the table feature or we could do ask x. It doesn't really matter for this. Um, especially if you start at zero, it doesn't matter. Okay, so at zero, we have five over two. So five over two is going to be the y-intercept. So zero comma five halves. So that's the x and y-intercept. Um, now let's plot these points. Okay, so as long as I'm in the calculator, take a look here. If you hit the toggle key, it shows you the decimal is 2.5. Okay, so this is the same thing as 0 comma 2.5. Um, so I'm going to plot that point right now. Okay, so 0 comma 2.5 would be right here. So that's my y-intercept. And how about negative 5 over 3? All right, so negative five over three, toggle it. So that's negative 1.6 repeating. So I'll you know, think of that as negative 1.7. Okay, so this is negative 1.7 comma zero. So negative 1.7 would be about here. All right, so there's my y-intercept and there's my x-intercept. All right, um, let's go ahead and plot some additional points and sketch the graph. Now, when I'm picking my points uh, to put on my x-axis, I focus on the vertical asymptote. So uh, since my vertical asymptote is at negative two, okay, so I've got my vertical asymptote here at negative two. The values I'm going to put on my table um, I'm going to go to the left and right of negative 2. Um, and I always start out with values that are 0.5 to the left and 0.5 to the right. So if I went 0.5 
to the left of negative 2, that would be negative 2.5. If I went 0.5 to the right, that would be negative 1.5. So I'm definitely going to include those. Now I'm going to go even further to the left and right. So this would be negative 3, and this would be negative 1. Um, I need at least these four values. See how much space do I have? One, two, three, four, five. Um, so I'll just go out one more time. So if I went to the left again, that would be negative four, and to the right again would be negative, uh, sorry, it would be zero. So these are the six values I'm going to use. So I've got negative four. All right, I've got negative four, negative three, uh, negative 2.5, negative 1.5, right, negative 1, and 0. Um, you know what, maybe I'll just divide this last, these squares are pretty big, so I'll just split them up and put negative 1, and I'll squeeze in 0. Okay, so now I'm going to get the, uh, the y values that go with these x values. And for that, I like to do ask x. So I've already got this in here, um, but I'm going to switch from auto mode to ask x mode. Okay, so let's see. I've got negative 4 and negative 3 and negative 2.5. Okay. And uh, let's see, 7 over 2 is 3.5. OK, so I've got 3.5 and 4 and 5. OK, so now I've got to do negative 1.5, negative 1, and 0. Okay, so I have 1, 2, and 5 over 2. Okay, so I've got 1, 2, and 5 over 2, which we already discovered was 2.5. And we've already just plain plotted, plotted that. That, that was our uh, y-intercept. Okay, so I'm going to plot the rest of these points, and I'll be ready to draw the graph. Okay, so negative 4 is at 3.5. Okay, so here's negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and it will be 3.5, which is here. Okay, negative 3, comma, 4. So negative 3 is at 4. Negative 2.5 is at 5, so this is negative 2.5. This is at 5. Okay, so we can really see the curve happening there. And then at negative 1.5, we're at 1. So this is negative 1, so negative 1.5, and we're up here at 1. Okay, and then at negative 1, we're at 2. So negative 1, comma, 2. All right, so these four points, including the uh, x and y-intercept, you can see a nice curve happening there. All right, so that's plenty to enable us to draw the graph. OK, so the function is going like this. Wait, I'm missing. Let me try that again. All right, so that first branch is going to look something like this. Um, even though it looks like it's touching the asymptote, because ink has thickness, in your imagination, understand that um, it's getting closer and closer to the asymptote without ever actually reaching it. And uh, it's going to do the same type of thing over here. It's going to, you know, it's going to look like you're tracing the asymptote, but really, you know that it doesn't touch. All 
All right, so your right branch should look something like that. Now we're ready to talk about the domain and range. All right, the domain is how f is the it's the x values of the graph. So we're looking at the graph from left to right, and uh, we're seeing what are the x values. Um, so this first branch of the graph, you know, goes from here to here, but on the x-axis it goes from here to here. So that's going to be the first part of the domain, not including negative two. So that upper left-hand branch um, is going from hold on uh, is going from negative infinity to negative two. Okay, leave it round because you can't include the asymptote. Union. Now this uh, lower right-hand branch um, is going from here to here, but um, on the x-axis, if you just look at the x-axis part, it's going from it's going from here to here. So it's going from negative two to positive infinity. So um, that's the other part of the domain. Okay, now let's talk about the range. Now the range is the y values of the graph. Um, so as we go from bottom to top, which is how you should always do the range from bottom to top, we first reach this lower right hand branch. Okay, now looking at the y axis though, this lower right hand branch goes from negative infinity up to 3. Alright, that's how high it goes from negative infinity to 3. Um, so that'll be the first part of the range will be from negative infinity to 3, not including the 3. Um, but then it picks up from here and goes up. Uh, and again, looking at the y-axis, it goes from 3 to positive infinity. So that'll be the second part of your range, 3 to infinity. And that is it for problem number 2. Okay, now problem number three is another graph. Let's start with the vertical asymptotes. All right, now for the vertical asymptotes, we have to set the denominator equal to zero. So if we set x squared minus four equal to zero and solve, um, I would factor this. Uh, it's the difference of two squares, so x plus two, x minus two set um, both of these equal to zero and you get x equals negative two x equals positive two these are your vertical asymptotes okay so um, let's go ahead and graph those vertical asymptotes as dotted lines so there you have your vertical asymptotes. Now for the horizontal asymptotes, we have to ask ourselves about the degree of the numerator compared with the denominator. If the degree of the numerator is less, then the horizontal asymptote will be y equals zero. If the degree of the numerator is equal, then we do a over c, le leading coefficients. If the degree of the numerator is greater, then there is no horizontal asymptote. All right? You have to have these rules memorized. Okay, so in this case, the degree of the numerator is 1. Because this is just a plain x. This is x squared, so the degree of the denominator is 2. So, since the degree of the numerator is less, that means the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. So let's go ahead and graph that right now, horizontal line. And there we go. 
All right, next uh, they're calling for the y-intercept, so might as well do that now. Um, y-intercept is easy. Just put the function in your calculator and check it out. So you hit the table button. All right, fraction mode. So I have x over x squared minus 4. Um, I'm just going to go straight to ask x mode this time. All right, um, if I want the y-intercept, I will put in 0 for x. Oh, look, 0 comma 0 is the y-intercept. And I might as well graph that, yeah? So boom, that's my y-intercept. Now, how about the x-intercept? Well, as long as there's no extra number hanging on the end, like the last problem had, can I look at it real quick? When you have the 3 on the end, an extra number, you have to set the whole problem equal to 0. But if you don't have any extra number on the end, then all you have to do is set the numerator equal to 0. Okay, and the numerator is just x. So if I set x equal to 0, then I'm done. That's, that's telling me the x-intercept is, um, the x value is 0. Of course, the y value of the x-intercept will always be 0. Um, so that's it. The x-intercept is also 0, comma 0, and we've already graphed it because of the y-intercept. Okay. Um, we're going to have to skip the increasing decreasing part for now um, because we have to have the function first. So in addition to the uh, intercept, the x and y intercept, let's plot a bunch of more points and see what we've got. Uh, when it's time to pick which x values to use, it's all about the vertical asymptote. Okay, and here I've got two vertical asymptotes, negative 2 and positive 2. So um, every vertical asymptote is going to give me four values to plot. And here's what I mean by that. So I have a vertical asymptote of negative 2. That's going to give me four values. I have a vertical asymptote of positive 2. That's going to give me four values. So um, if I look at the negative 2, my first two values are going to be uh, the numbers immediately to the left and right of this. Now, I want to use uh, decimals. So I'm going to go 0.5 to the left and 0.5 to the right. So I will have negative 2.5 and negative 1.5. Now I'm going to get another two values by going further. So I will have negative 3 and I will have negative 1. So I've got those four values so far. Um, now I'm going to get four values from the 2. If I go to the left and right of 2, I'm going to get, um, and again, decimals, 0.5 to the left, then I've got 1.5. 0 0.5 to the right is 2.5. Now I'm going to get two more values by going to the left and right again. To the left of 1.5 is 1, and to the right of, of 2.5 is 3. So I will have these eight values, the pink one, you know, ignore the asymptotes themselves. Um, looking at the pink numbers, I have eight values. Now, let me see how many spaces I have on my chart to see if I need to add some more in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, I, I really need eight. Um, to accomplish what I need to accomplish. So I am going to add in two extra values. So, um, you know, if you were taking this quiz, I would just, you know, add, I would just draw extra boxes on the end to make room for the eight that you need. Just add them on the end. Okay, um, but because I'm doing this on a computer, I can just add them in. So that is what I'm going to do.
okay so magic one two three four five six seven eight so now I've got my eight that I need so I'm just gonna copy those onto my chart now so I've got negative three negative two point five negative one point five negative one 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 point five two point five and three okay so I need all the y values that go with these eight x values and I'm gonna find them using my TI 30 okay so I've got negative 3 and negative 2.5 and negative 1.5 all right you can only put in three values at a time so let's deal with this okay so using my toggle key to help me with the decimals this first one is um, negative 0.6 And the next one is negative 1.1. I'm just rounding to one decimal place. So negative 1.1. And the last one is negative 0.9. No, wait, 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 wait. Positive 0.9, not, not negative. Okay, um, let's do the next three. So I've got negative one, positive one, and 1 1.5. All right, so I've got one third, which I know is 0.3. And I've got negative one third, which I know will be negative 0.3 and I've got negative 6 over 7 which is negative 0.9 alright now I've got 2.5 and 3 Okay, so at 2.5, I'm looking at 1.1. And at 3, I'm looking at 0.6. All right, so these are my eight values, and I need to plot them all. Um, so I'm going to do that off camera. So I'm going to take these eight points. I'm just going to plot them on the graph. So here I've graphed the eight points in pink, and so here's what that looks like. Um, so that's enough information for me to draw the curves. Let's see, let me make this a little stronger. So I'm going to draw these curves uh, through these points and approaching the asymptotes on either side. So your first branch should look something like that. Now the middle branch, notice how you've got um, on the left these two points are above the x-axis and uh, on the right it's below. So clearly it's crossing through the x-axis. We even had the um, x-intercept here at 0, 0. So that might make you nervous because you're thinking, wait a minute, I thought this was an asymptote. You're not supposed to touch it. You're not supposed to cross it. Well, um, that's definitely true when you're talking about vertical asymptotes. You never touch a vertical asymptote and you'll never cross it. Um, however, horizontal asymptotes are really just there for the end behavior. On the left, you see the graph is approaching that asymptote. But um, in, the, in the middle, you will often uh, cross or touch the horizontal asymptote. So that's uh, what's happening here. Don't be alarmed by that. So this graph um, 
by the time it gets to the end, it's going to appear to be tracing the asymptote, even though in our minds we know it's not really touching. Okay, so that should look something like that. And then this branch, okay, that's not good enough. I knew I should have drawn this off camera. This is really tough to do with an electronic pen, you guys. All right, so your graph should look very much like this. Um, now we can do the increasing, decreasing part. Um, so when you're talking about increasing and decreasing, you are scanning across the graph from left to right. Okay, so let's see, increasing and decreasing. So um, first we come to this part of the graph. Um, this first branch of the graph is decreasing because of the way it is going downhill, all right, from left to right, it's decreasing. Um, but we are only to speak of the x values when you write down these intervals. So this branch of the graph that we get to first goes from negative infinity to negative 2. That's what you put down, just the x value. So just look at the x-axis. Okay, so that was decreasing um, from neg okay, that's too thick. So negative infinity to negative 2. Um, next, the graph jumps up here and does this. Swoosh. That is going downhill. Um, but we are only to look at the x values that are covered by this graph. So uh, looking at the x-axis, this swoosh goes from negative 2 to positive 2. All right, so that's another decreasing interval from negative 2 to positive 2. Okay, now looking at the third branch, um, it goes alright, it is, it is again decreasing from left to right. But again, we are only going to write the x values of that so if you're staring at the x-axis, it goes from 2 to infinity. That portion of the graph goes from 2 to infinity. Um, so that's what we'll put down for the final decreasing interval. OK. Um, there were no increasing portions of the graph, so we will just say none. And uh, I think we've answered everything that we were asked for problem number three. Okay, so let's move on. Now we're supposed to write a rational function with vertical asymptotes negative four and positive four and horizontal asymptote y equals zero. Okay, so let me get this straight. We need vertical asymptotes x equals negative four and x equals positive 4 and we need a horizontal asymptote y equals 0 yeah okay so we know that you get the vertical asymptotes by setting the denominator equal to 0 so I need a denominator that will give me these solutions if I set them equal to 0 um, well let's start by looking at the factors that would give me these solutions if they were set equal to zero. So a factor of x plus four would give me a solution of negative four. A factor of x minus four would give me a solution of four. So um, again, the vertical asymptote comes from setting the denominator equal to zero. So if I had a denominator that factored to x plus four, x minus four, that would give me the uh, vertical asymptotes that I want. So um, I really want this as a polynomial though in standard form. So let's go ahead and multiply these out. And if you multiply these out, you're going to get x squared minus 16. This is the difference of two squares. 
So you know that if you have x squared minus 16, that will factor as x plus 4 times x minus 4. Or you could have sat here and multiplied it out. You could have foiled it, and it will give you x squared minus 16. Okay, um, now what about the other part? Um, we need the horizontal asymptote to be y equals 0. So um, if we want the horizontal asymptote to be y equals 0, according to the three rules, um, to be y equals 0, the degree of the numerator has to be less than the degree of the denominator. Okay, um, so we just <laughs> need a numerator that has a smaller degree than this. So um, the degree of the denominator, uh, this is degree 2 because of the x squared. So we just need the numerator to have degree 1 or degree 0. Okay, so really you can put anything up here that you want as long as it has degree 1 or degree 0. And then you're okay. So um, you could put x up here, all right, because that has degree 1. Or you could put a constant up here because that has degree 0. So I could put like a 3. Okay, so you could just put anything up here. So I'm just going to write anything degree 1 or 0. Okay, and that would be a rational function that would satisfy these uh, criteria. All right, so there's um, many, many correct answers for this problem. And I think that was the end. That's the end of the quiz. I hope this video was helpful.